I guess it's all about the virus, right? And how small companies are trying to deal with the mess that's been happening. Uh, maybe you can give me a quick picture of where the situation is, where SMEs are concerned, and how basically the the tax measures can help them get through this mess. Okay, thanks, Trang, um, and, and and thanks for inviting me uh, to this uh, podcast. Uh, well, everybody is suffering from 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 this particular crisis. I think I think that's quite clear. But uh, I think in the context of Malaysia, what are we looking at? Um, I think all of us know that uh, SMEs make up what. 85, 80, 98% of uh, the business population. And uh, not only that, uh, we have to also think about the fact that the SMEs employ, what, something like 66% of uh, the total workforce in Malaysia. So whatever happens to uh, the SMEs actually has a, a tremendous impact in so far as the Malaysian economy is concerned. Uh, which sectors, services sector, okay, construction, all of these uh, basically involve all kinds of SMEs in Malaysia. And uh, if you look at the current situation is concerned, what's the, the, what are the industries that are most clearly affected? Uh, well, very obviously, hotel, tourism, uh, airlines, retail. I mean, you go to the malls, what's, what's in the mall nowadays? Everything is closed. Uh, food and beverages. I mean, you look at restaurants, restaurants are closed. Uh, thankfully, uh, some of them have become a little bit enterprising, I guess, and, and, and started doing delivery services. But still, we are still talking about a significant chunk of their uh, business uh, significantly affected. Uh, incomes are down. Employees, uh, to a certain extent, or very largely, are going to be redundant. Uh, yeah, so, so the, the entire economy, the entire sector, uh, in so far as business is concerned, are uh, tremendously affected. So uh, this is something that's, that's obviously extremely worrying to everybody. Lah. Yeah, so so obviously the government has done its bit to try and help the small businesses. Not every small business will be aware of what's out there available for them. What are some of the key things? Um, I mean, the the, the, the main thing that uh, people have been talking about, obviously, uh, will be direct costs. I mean, if you don't produce, okay, and you don't sell, at least if, if you have no revenue, you don't have a cost of sales. But... The one thing that they cannot avoid, obviously, will be their fixed costs, which are their staff costs. Okay, uh, and that's the one thing that uh, the government has been looking into, uh, and I think everybody has been talking about. But perhaps not everybody is very clear uh, as to what it is that uh, is being suggested by the government. Uh, well, the wage subsidy, uh, the wage subsidy program. Uh, there were there were variations of it, but the final position, obviously, is such that. Uh, employers can get as much as 1,200 uh, per affected employee, okay, up to a maximum of 200 employees who earn below 4,000, okay? So that is a substantial amount of, of uh, benefits uh, or cost savings that uh, businesses can actually enjoy, okay? Uh, so you, we have three tiers, obviously. The first tier being the micro-enterprises, okay? Those who earn have 300,000 or less uh, turnover, uh, with five or less employees, uh, they, they get 600 per employee, okay? And then 800 for the ones who have uh, up to 200 employees, uh, higher turnover. And then more than uh, 75 employees, uh, and groups with more than 75 employees, sorry, more than 200 employees, I'm sorry, uh, get, uh, get basically 600, okay, per employee up to 200. So, the, the thing to note here is that uh, you can be a non-SME if you like, okay? This particular wage subsidy is not uh, restricted to any criteria in so far as your turnover, in so far as the number of staff you have, you can enjoy, uh, provided that you meet certain conditions. Uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, a reduction in turnover for, for more than, of more than 50%. Now, uh, important thing to note is that what do you have to do in order to enjoy this particular benefit? Uh, you need to get in touch with Pocasso, Okay, There are application processes that Pocasso has put up. Uh, you need to provide information. You need to provide documents. Uh, you need to show them okay, uh, that you perhaps have reduced your turnovers by 50%. But, and when once you, you are able to do that, then you should be able to continue to get this particular benefit for three months. But important thing to note is that you cannot lay them off, okay? Uh, you have to continue paying them, and then the government will give you the, the particular benefit. So 
uh, things that people need to put into place in order to avail themselves to this benefit. And uh, uh, all SMEs, all micro businesses should basically uh, take note of, of these uh, opportunities that are available uh, and, and, and uh, take advantage of, of these to help them out uh, during these difficult times. There's also some stuff in terms of deferments, right? So you can defer company tax uh, advance payments. Uh, I'm not sure whether that qualifies for um, their employee tax deductions, mm -hmm. though. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, what has been announced uh, is that uh, for employees, the monthly tax deductions for uh, March and April can be paid uh, by uh, the 30, 31st of May. So typically, your March uh, MTDs would have had to be paid by 15 April and similarly April by 15 May. Okay, these can be deferred until 31st May. Now, uh, what we should note, obviously, is that this is just a deferment. That payment still needs to be made. Okay, so uh, if anything, uh, it helps employers in so far as uh, managing their cash flows for a short time. Uh, but really, uh, if we talk about the deadline of 31st May, the payment is still due. So you end up having to pay the two months uh, monthly tax deductions if you do pay your employees. Uh, on the by the 31st of May, and then you will have to end up paying the May deduction by 15th of June. So uh, if you think of it that way, uh, not so much in so far as absolute assistance is concerned, uh, more uh, convenience in order to allow all employees to access funds uh, to make payments to the revenue in respect of the monthly deductions. Uh, th there's the other one uh, relating to um, uh, business people uh, where they pay tax installments via the CP500. Okay? Uh, these are business people who typically will not be uh, deducting uh, MTDs or, or the PCBs via their own salaries. So they make voluntary uh, how we call it, payments of installments based on schedules provided by the IRB. Uh, the March and May installments uh, are deferred okay, for these individuals who have these uh, tax installment schemes uh, and the taxpayer basically will end up paying the, their taxes uh, less those two installments uh, together when they file the tax returns uh, in the subsequent year. So uh, in so far as uh, business people are concerned, there is a little bit of benefit in so far as deferring uh, any income taxes payable uh, up and to the point whereby they actually file tax returns. Sir. Okay, so there's also some relief for rental, right? So uh, I, I yes. what I understand is that if you rent from a GLC, then there's some kind of relief. But then there's also some kind of tax deduction if you rent from a private enterprise. How does that work? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Chong. Uh, what has been announced, uh, obviously, is the fact that whilst uh, the government institutions and the... Uh, uh, GLCs are, 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 are very forthcoming with uh, rental reductions in so far as SMEs are concerned. And remember, it's SMEs. Huh? Uh, it is not all businesses. Uh, the private sector is also encouraged like, to help out here. And uh, in order to, to motivate the private sector to assist the SMEs in so far as their rental payments are concerned, uh, there is a deduction available uh, to, these, uh, to the private sector in so far as any rental rebates or reductions uh, during this particular period, okay? And uh, provided, of course, uh, that the rental reduction is uh, up at least 30% of the previous rental that was paid by the SME. So effectively, uh, what we can end up in a situation, an ideal position, obviously, would be the fact that the SMEs reduce their overheads in so far as rentals. Uh, and in so far as the uh, private company is concerned, that, that the landlord, if you like, uh, they will have, number one, reduced rental income, obviously, but they can also take a deduction in so far as this particular reduction in rental uh, income. So to a certain extent, if you think about it, it is like a double deduction. Uh, you, you have reduced income and then you get a deduction on top of that. Uh, but it has to be said, obviously, that this particular uh, benefit, uh, if you like, uh, or this particular measure that has been introduced is still subject to uh, the relevant gazette orders that are going to be issued by the government. I mean, this is obviously going to be a change of uh, provisions in the law, uh, and it cannot just be approved just like that. It, they, they would have to be accompanying gazette orders to formalize uh, this particular deduction that's going to be given. Okay, so 
uh, a lot of the um, assistance is in the form of a time frame, right? Three months. Do you get a sense, and I, I don't know how much interaction you've had with the relevant authorities, do you think this is going to be extended? Uh, they, well, the, the indications obviously are uh, when the original MCO was put in place, uh, certain measures were introduced. Um, and when the MCO got extended, uh, some of these measures were extended as well. So I, I think the government will play it by ear and see whether what, what developments are, uh, to be very honest. Uh, if touch wood, uh, for any reason, the MCO is extended even further, uh, then I, I think certainly there will be additional uh, measures put in, certain extensions will be made. Uh, I, I give you an example. Uh, for uh, When the initial MCO was put in place, uh, there were extensions given for the filing of tax returns for companies with year ends up till November. Okay, so so if I had a November uh, 2018, uh, sorry, 2019 uh, business, okay, uh, typically I would have filed by uh, 31st July. Okay, seven months plus one month extension given by IRB every year. Huh? Okay. But uh, with uh, the uh, December's were not given this particular extension, December year ends. So when the, when the MCO was extended uh, for the, 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 the extra two weeks, uh, the revenue uh, effectively came out with uh, another announcement to suggest that even December year end companies are extended. So December year end companies are now extended to September. So if uh the MCO were further extended or if the government imposes further measures in so far as trying to, to curtail uh, the spread of uh, the virus, then uh, I guess it can be expected that there, there will be additional measures that will be introduced by the government. Uh, exactly what they are, obviously, is, 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 is a little bit uh, unclear. Uh, and, and we have seen uh, numerous uh, prihatin packages, the stimulus packages being announced on an ongoing basis, uh, you know, the 20 billion, then the 230 billion, then the extra 10 billion that came out. Uh, I think we, 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 we can, uh, I suppose, expect uh, more to be announced, uh, depending on what the measures are that will be introduced by the government uh, uh, in the coming weeks. Okay. <laughs> I think there's some element of discretion where um, the government says to individual enterprises, yes, you can reopen. How, how do you go about that process? Um, there, there is an application document. Uh, there is an application document uh, that was uh, created by by uh, MITI. It's an on online application, um, and uh, effectively, there is a list, if you like, of uh, qualifying uh, activities. Obviously, that can be uh, how we call that eligible to uh, open up in so far as uh, uh, the period of the MCO is concerned. I mean. Obviously, if we look at that particular list, it basically contains a lot of very essential services. Uh, but we've also got things like the automotive industry uh, and servicing of, auto of, of vehicles. Uh, we've got laundry services. You remember the time when the, the announcement was barbers can open. Uh, but of course, that subsequently has been the, how we call that uh, overturned. Uh, there are a lot of sectors uh, which can open. Um, uh, and uh, this application process will have to go through MITILA, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. You will have to furnish the, the details and information as to uh, the number of staff, who are the staff who are going to be allowed to uh, return to uh, the premises to continue operations. Uh, it, it is basically a, a process whereby uh, these things have to be submitted. I've read, in fact, in the papers whereby MITI is, uh, how we call it, uh, 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 getting assistance from other agencies in order to, to uh, process these applications uh, in order to enable these, these guys to, to submit. Now, I heard that there were some 300,000 applications in MITI already. Uh, so uh, I have no clue how long they will take in order to process all of this. Uh, hopefully uh, quite soon because uh, certainly these sectors uh, need to get up and running again, uh, especially the essential ones uh, in order to, to, uh, to create uh, some level of activity within the country. Okay, so um, 
I know it doesn't seem like it at this point in time because we are right in the middle of the crisis and in the depth of the problem. But it does seem in totality that if you put it all together, there's something really there. There really is something there for SMEs, right? I mean, what is your parting message to them? Okay, uh, I, I would say that uh, I mean everybody knows this, these are tough times. Uh, they will have to look at uh, how it is that they can con uh, continue some form of business. Uh, I think uh, one would have to to to. Uh, Acknowledge uh, some of these guys in the F&B sector, for example, who have uh, been doing uh, deliveries uh, of, of of their food items uh, uh, during this particular time when, uh, in the past, they never used to do that. Uh, uh, I've been buying chichong from 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 the manufacturer, for example. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, so so they've been doing that much more nowadays. Everybody is is looking at ways and means in which to continue with their operations. Uh, despite the fact that we've got social distancing measures. So uh, I think everybody should really think about how they can continue to do this uh, a lot more. Uh, but on top of that, uh, some of these measures that we talked about are, are extremely important uh, that they should be looking into. Uh, assistance is there, uh, prob prob perhaps not uh, how we call it, to the extent that everybody would love to have, but they are there, so take advantage of them. Uh, I think we didn't talk about the fact that there are grants and, and, and loans uh, for micro enterprises that everybody should also see whether they are eligible for uh, and, and really uh, knuckle down. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I know that there are uh, perhaps uh, provisions allowing for employers to think about uh, how we call it things like uh, reduced work hours and stuff like that. Uh, I, I mean, push comes to shove, it, it comes to that particular situation. Uh, some employees may end up having to do that, but uh, uh, if we don't look at that, that particular, or we put that particular measure as a last resort, uh, there are still uh, a number of, uh, how we call it, uh, uh, opportunities uh, to, to take advantage of uh, the provisions of the government in so far as this particular crisis goes. Hey, man, Tai, thank you for your thoughts. Um, good luck. I mean, I hope you're staying sane during this MCO as well. Um, and uh, thank you for your insights and your thoughts. Thanks, Zhuang. Uh, you stay safe too.